Hey, what's up? Mike at MPT here, and holy crap, will you look at this thing? This is a 1951 F100 truck. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? To put it into perspective, this came from the factory originally with 95 horsepower. When we're done with it, it should be making around 400 to the wheels. This bad boy is powered by a 3.5 twin turbo EcoBoost, and of course it's equipped with a Wagner intercooler. We've also got a very common modification for the EcoBoost trucks, a turbo smart blow off valve, UPR catch can, and also featuring a Be Cool custom radiator. Let's go ahead and hop onto the inside and check out these gauges by Dakota Digital. We've got a steering wheel by Billet Specialties, AC system by Old Air Products. Looking at the suspension, this truck is bad. It's got an Airlift 3H air suspension system, and to help us stop, we've got front and rear beer brakes. Lastly, we've got the custom Curry 9-inch rear end. So to give you the rundown on this, this 3.5 twin turbo EcoBoost started out in a 2015 expedition. Now Wagner and a few other companies worked together to get this swap done. NPT had nothing to do with this badassery, but the damn thing don't work. So they shipped it to us and we have a very short deadline before it's shipped off to Germany for the Motor SM show. During the first test drive, we could already see the problem. The VCT just wasn't doing its job. When we would usually see the exhaust cam and the intake cam moving as you're driving, these stayed stationary right around zero. So this is the problem that we're focusing on. So we're gonna start with some pretty basic maintenance that really any EcoBoost owner has on their to-do list. We're gonna pull the plugs, check the gap, and replace them if needed. We're gonna clean both map sensors. That's one on the intake manifold, as well as one on the intake charge pipe. And then while we're there, we're also gonna pull off the intake charge pipe, wipe around inside, and check for any signs of blow-by. So to make things interesting, this thing was supposed to arrive on Wednesday. And instead, it arrived five days late on Monday. And then, transport calls and says they need to pick it up on Tuesday. The original pickup date was planned for Friday. So after some delegation, we agreed on Wednesday, which gives us an extra day of much needed time. Because as of now, after all that basic maintenance, the problem is still there. Showing optimal stability now, where it used to be showing FM, EM. Oh, you could just tell just by listening to it. I mean, the RPMs are a little high right now, but that's because the engine's still cold. But it just sounds better. <laughs> I cannot believe that we pulled this off. Cams change modes like they're supposed to. You can see when I rev it. The exhaust cam is moving now. Intake cam is moving. We are back in business. quits for the day the power and the torque is not exactly what I was expecting and we're getting some pretty heavy black smoke on wide open throttle so before we were down to the wire well the wire is here the transport just showed up. Fortunately, he agreed to stick around for maybe another two hours. Uh, it's, it's 
around 10 a.m. 12 noon is his cutoff time of when he's absolutely got to go. So we're trying as, to work as fast as possible. We're still having some misfire and plug issues, some fuel delivery issues that we're trying to work out. So now that we've fixed so many other things, we're going back and doing another misfire monitor neutral profile correction. It's also known as a crank relearn. Here we've got a misfire monitor. Now it's not going far enough to register a misfire, but you can see that cylinders one and four are both getting very close. You can see it down here. It's almost there, almost there. It's got one and one. But you know, under wide open throttle, that might become more of a problem. I feel like we accomplished a lot, but just having the transport here, like waiting on us is, it's kind of hard pressure wise like I want to do more but time is out and it kind of sucks but on the bright side I mean it came in like barely running and now it's making like 380 horsepower so not the 400 that we wanted which is sucks to me but I know Wagner's gonna be happy because the, the cams work it drives a thousand percent better. So overall, it's just like, overall a success. At this point, we should just like start putting it back together and get this thing on the transport, headed down to Miami and off to Germany. Uh, dang it. Well, I just realized why we're a little down on power. The torque converter was completely unlocked during that entire third gear hit. Had the torque converter been locked, we might have actually hit our goal. The bad thing about this swap is that typically on these vehicles, you have a manual mode and you can use it to lock the vehicle into gear. It's got the correct shifter, it's got the manual mode, it's got the buttons to change gears, it just doesn't work. This time I had to manually lock it within the software and unfortunately, the torque converter didn't lock as well. This thing's a little sketchy. You know, it's, it's a show car. And there's no seat belts. And the ride is super bumpy. Turbo. We're done. Transport's here to pick it up. Little test drive. 